Boxing King Media in association with Box Raw. Uh, I'm delighted to have with me Prince Patel and uh, Tony Banj. Gents, first, how are we doing? First of all, you forgot, aka the guru of girth, the messiah of mass, the leader of length, the auntie annihilator, and the guy that will leave your uncle crying in the corner and over there, uh, Prince Patel, yeah. That is quite a long introduction. I'm sorry, I'm not known to it, but I'll remember it for next time. Tony, how are you? I'm good, guys. I'm good. <laughs> Why are you hiding under your hat? Because <laughs> I know he's going to do some mad shit to get us in trouble, but I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> Prince, let's just start with you while Tony's trying to recover there. Um, last time we interviewed you, you had a, um, a bodyguard with you today. So uh, has, has Tony kind of taken up those duties now since he's not talking much? Uh, no, nah, truthfully, uh, me and Tony just put our brains together and we've created a promotional company called Platinum Punch Promotions. And uh, I was the first signing for it. Tony was the second signing for it. And we're just trying to push it, get the community behind us and move forward. I was going to ask, there's one, two, three, there's about six phones lying here. Is there, is there a reason why we have six uh, phones on the ticket, table? Ticket this is my ticket line. I don't know about these ones. Tony's it's got ticket line, guys. It's ticket line. It's a ticket line. It's his ticket line. Yeah. So let's jump straight in. What, what is actually going on here? Because last we saw of yourself, Prince, your association with Dean White, um, seen you abroad, have a couple of fights abroad. So what's the change and why the sudden kind of opening of a, of a promotional company? Um, I saw how successful my, my return to the UK was. I saw the numbers it done. Um, me fighting on any one show is going to bring in numbers, bring in ticket sales. So I just thought, you know what? Me and Tony spoke. He's got a good business brain. I've got good punching power. And we thought, you know what? Let's put it together. And... Uh, get the community behind us, because we've got basically all the Southall behind us. The Prince of Wales, Great Western, which is Hayes. Sheffy boys. Sheffy, all these loads, loads of different people. Studio 36, we've got everyone behind us in Southall. And um, they're going to be, they're going to be there in their numbers. We've, just to clarify, we've already sold 1,100 tickets. And we haven't even given tickets to the, the, fighters, the yeah. fighters on the undercard. So, so go a few amount of tickets. We're almost about a month away now from, yeah. from the show itself. So do you expect it to sell out with the volume you've already done? Ah, oh, easy. 100%. Easy. 100%. So is this the new Prince Patel now? You have your own promotional company? Because I think you teased online. I can't remember that there was an announcement pending. Yeah, yeah. literally, this is what it was. It, the, the whole idea is, is we've got the vision of we won an Indian world champion. And uh, with the whole of South all behind us, it's inevitable. Genetics of warriors. Your relationship with your relationship with Dean White, how is that? Because obviously it seemed like from the offset, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you've been around the block, you've you've been managed by loads of different people, but it felt like to me that you had a real close relationship with Dean, where you almost, you know, looked after each other and him look after you mo most importantly. Uh, I've not really been managed by a lot of people. I've only had Steve Goodwin when I first started pro. I had one fight with him, then I had Frank Warren. And then ever since then, if you look at my career from, I think it was 4-0 to 31-1, it was basically me. I was the brains behind all of that. I managed myself to that. I was the guy who was going around the world, the Middle East, to Africa, to, to Eastern Europe, Central Europe, jumping in the ring, no corner team, just doing it on my own, laying the smack down like no one else can. And... Um, when I teamed up with Dean, it was more just, he had a, a promotion. Uh, I wanted to jump on a promotion. Um, I sold the tickets, I brought the numbers. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to go on the show, just like everyone else on small shows. I paid my house fees, paid my opponents, all that sort of stuff, and just split it amicably, really. Like, he couldn't really do anything for me. So now I've got to push forward, and I think no better way than a promotion that's literally for the fighters that have been told they're not good enough, told they can't be a champion, told they won't achieve anything. I'm living proof that I'm not saying I've won a world, I've not won a world title yet, but I've won everything else bar a world title, international titles, continental titles, intercontinental titles, commonwealth titles, becoming the first Indian to do that. It's just this promotion is literally for the fighters that like look at Martin Hillman. He's on the card. That's a guy who's been used, abused, um, 
asked to fight at super... He's, he's currently doing super flyweight. He fought Boy Jones at super featherweight. That's like six weights up. They didn't care about his health there when they offered him that fight. They just wanted to use him as a punch bag to get a win. Martin completed the rounds, and now we should be having them a domestic title at Super Flyweight. That's a big jump down from Super Feather to, to Super Fly. He's someone that no one gave a chance to. And we're just trying to get him to the position where we believe he can win championship belts. He can, he can show them championship belts to his children when he eventually has them. I know his, I know his uncle, who's passed away, unfortunately, he was a Southern Area champion, and I know Martin would love to win that belt as well. So I just want to make him happy, make his family happy, and put smiles on people's faces. And Tony, from your perspective as well, obviously, last time I interviewed you, you were actually fighting on Dean White's show. So are the reasons exactly the same as, as The Prince? Um, truthfully, I'm still good friends with Dean. I still chat to him. Um, what he did for me, I'm very grateful for what he did. But I just felt like, OK, I like what he's doing with the promotion. I felt like I could do the same sort of thing. Obviously, it is a lot of work, and um, I, just, I just honestly think I could do it, and I'd be pretty good at it. So it's the first one almost like a test to see how you yeah. get on and then plan a few more later down the year? Well, the thing is, literally, once I've done my show, Tony, and Tony said to me, look, you, you bring numbers. Look at the viewing figures. Like, if you, if, you, if you look at them and you compare them to other viewing figures or small shows and you look at the live YouTube views, so a lot of girthy numbers. Like I remember Gould saying that the numbers dramatically shut up when I was on there. He couldn't even control it whilst it was live because obviously the amount of viewers on the stream and he was struggling to have like the, the proper sort of connections to keep it all. But yeah, he managed to, he managed to do it. And um, the tickets that I do, I sell tickets. You put Prince Patel and Tony Banjo on a show together. Yeah, he, this sold, guy man. only does ringsides. We had an argument because he was demanding specifically ringsides only. I had some people that wanted to buy the ringsides as well, but I've given him the lion's share of the ringsides. He, these people want ringsides. Our ringsides come with a three-course Indian meal as well, of course. Best, food, best food in the world. So, yeah. so with Dean, everything is fine. You, you left respectfully, and maybe he might even turn up to the show to support you. Maybe. Maybe he's more than welcome to the show. Um, I think he's got a show on at the same night, though. So... If he, if he wants to come after his show, he's more than welcome. Okay, well, Prince, let's, let's, you're talking about selling tickets, you're talking about winning every major title possible except the world, right? That's yeah. what you just said. Um, when do we see you step up? When do, you, when do we see you step up to the names that have been calling you out here in the UK? Because there's a lot of talk on Twitter. Daily we see it from fighters, not just you, just giving an overall example. When do we see you finally step up? The only name that has mentioned my name is Isaac Lowe, yeah, but you don't want to fight. Like, uh, they, they did make an offer, but the offer was laughable. I even spoke to Isaac privately. What did they offer you? 25 grand. That's 25 that's grand. Cool, man. I'm wearing 22 karat Indian gold around my neck. 22 karat Indian gold around my neck. That's worth more than Isaac's house, his chalet, whatever he lives in. Okay. Yeah, let's be real. That right there, 22 <coughs> karat Indian gold. It's worth more than what he got paid in his last fight. That's worth more than what he got so, paid no, wait, in his so last two years worth of tw fighting. 25, if the promotion backed you to do it on Platinum, would you do it on Platinum? 100 look, September 16th. If he wants to fight me, promotion wants to back it, let's do it. Exactly what you offered me, I'll fight you for that. What's the situation with the weight category, though? Uh, obviously, once, if, if he accepts it, which he won't, he can bring his boyfriend Tyson Fury down with him and uh, his boyfriend can watch him take a real beating. Not the sort of little touches that he does with him. I'm talking a proper, yeah, <laughs> the real beating. Let's go back to the Misfit show because we haven't caught up with you since then. Um, they were trying to get you to do kind of a face-off together. Um, talk to me what happened there. Uh, we didn't really have a face-off. What really happened was he come behind me and tried to choke me. And then when I got up, he like pulled away, like, no, don't touch me, like, and then his friend was there and then security sort of got in between us a little bit and I don't know, like, he's a bit weird. He's all, like, you've seen the way he types. English obviously isn't his first language. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, with eyes, I actually think he's a really good fighter. I like him. Yeah. But obviously you want to provoke the fight and everything. Um, we'd love to do that fight on our show, you know, it'd be a great fight. 
me personally, I think he's a wicked fighter. Yeah, so me and my community really like him. Having him on our show to build it up would be awesome. Let's all due respect to you and, and your show, but Isaac's obviously been fighting on Tyson Fury's undercards over the last few years. The, re the chances of him coming on your show? Okay. Did you see how MT his last fight was? He fought on a IBO, super bantamweight, world title undercard. You probably didn't even know he fighted because no one really watched the show. Let's, let's be real, it was an MT leisure center. And there's nothing wrong with fighting leisure centers. Our show's in a leisure center. My last fight in the UK was in a leisure center, Tolworth Recreation, that's a leisure center. Yeah. Um, but if you ain't selling these leisure centers out, no one's coming to watch you apart from, and the thing is, is that was his, his boyfriend Tyson Feud. That's the first time he made a public appearance since he announced he was fighting Nganu. No one, no one turned up apart from his boyfriend. And then he's screaming to an empty crowd saying, I'm back. You're calling the best heavyweight champion in the world, bro. He ain't the best heavyweight in the world. But he ain't the best heavyweight <laughs> I, I think in the world. he's one of the best in the world. One of the best, he's but the best. isn't the best. Nah, he's one of the best. Who's the best? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, obviously, it's, 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 no, there's, there's, there's he, he is the best heavyweight in the I world. Think I, think him, yeah. I think Usyk is the best heavyweight in the world. You know, obviously. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really fight, like yeah. to watch heavyweights because it's not beneficial for me. But I think Usyk beats him. And I think Usyk beats Daniel Dabar as well next week. Another altercation that you got yourself into, um, and again, we didn't catch up with you at the time, was in your call with Fraser yeah. Clark, where he yeah, yeah. mishandled you. Um, did you end up pressing charges because you said you were talking about going down that route? I can't comment on this matter. It's, it's a no comment situation. Tony said no comment for him, but what about you? So what did you make of Fraser sure, sure. grappling with I, Prince I, I, Patel? I don't, know, I don't know Fraser. He's got a big fan base. A lot of people do like really? him. Really? I, I don't know him. Let's be real. Let's, let's yeah. be real. That, 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 that show that happened, yeah, the whole event, the whole press conference, build up, weigh in, whatever it was, they only was talking about me. So I turned up to a Sky Sports boxer weigh in and everyone left talking about me. I'm in the baby weights. No one really cares about me. I'm just in the baby weights. And they were left talking about me. All right, tr truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, <laughs> <laughs> you it is the truth though, they're like talking about me. What, what? <laughs> With Fraser, you did provoke him a little bit. Like some, of the, some of the stuff you say does provoke people. Like, so I talk to you like my brother. Um, some of the things you do, people do take it to heart. And so I can understand why he got a bit upset. He could have handled it better. I mean, me being an Indian, seeing a big guy like that manhandled another Indian, it did, did make me feel like, whoa, like, come on, it's a bit too much. But maybe you did push his triggers and stuff. Um, it's down to him to, to put his statement and stuff, what he wants to say. But um, I don't know the guy, I can't judge the guy. Um, in regards to what he did to Patel, I think he could have handled it better. Another man that you've had online beef with for a long time, Sonny Edwards. Mm -hmm. He fights Bam Rodriguez, arguably one of his toughest fights ever. Bam is one of the, you know, a top, a top fighter himself, trained by Robert Garcia. Um, just your thoughts on the fight and how do you think the fight plays out? To be honest, I haven't, I've just been focusing on myself and focusing on the promotion, getting the community behind me. I haven't even really been taking notice. I think they're fighting, is it November or December, something like that? Yeah, I, he's going to America, so obviously he must have got his ban taken off him or whatever it was, because obviously I think there was a, an issue with certain people going to America for whatever reasons. But uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't really care about that fight. If, if it comes down the line that I fight one of them guys, we already know what happens. It's a reason why I've knocked out 26 out of 31 people. 31 wins with 26 KOs. That's no, that's no accident. What guy in the lower weights has that? Do you know what it is? It's, it's genetics of warriors. We're not food wonder here, man. This no is real genetics here, of warriors. Why is Tony laughing? Because he knows the truth. He knows what it is. Genetics of warriors. There's a bit of an inside joke on this, but hey, I'll let you guys figure the it out. The truth yourself. is, is me and Tony done some rounds. Tony, Tony knows how hard I hit. He was in a sweatsuit and kind of done like a lot more rounds before I jumped in, but yeah, he knows. He knows. Does he hit hard? Yeah, for his hits really hard, yeah. That's one thing I was yeah, going you for You can like, see by yeah. his record he hits hard. Might he not be the most technically greatest, but I've, I've got the equaliser. I'll be honest, um, we did go out and fly, uh, fly out in Tanzania. We boxed out there. 
And I was quite sure he's actually like a real superstar out there. When I saw the way they treat him, there's like people running up to him, taking pictures. His posters are everywhere. I don't know if he stuck them up himself, <laughs> but his posters are everywhere. They got like big um, banners of him. And he went on the boxing circuit. They all knew him, it, the respect he got. It was like he was world champion already. He just needs to get that belt. So you're not going to give me a prediction for Edwards and Bam Rodriguez? It's truthfully, like, I haven't actually sat down. I've watched a bit of Bam. I know Sonny roughly from some highlight clips I've seen. I don't actually know how he fights. Uh, Bam, I've seen him, I think he, he beat Wignac, the one that knocked out Roman. Uh, he struggled in his last fight, had a broken jaw. He would have more than a broken jaw. I would, like, me. I would like Sonny to win. Sonny's a Brit. He's one of ours. We'll squat our own. So I would like Sonny to win. Okay, so just finally, just, uh, just on, a, on, a, on a kind of neutral basis, boxing suffered over the last kind of year or so with this whole Conor Ben stuff. Last week we saw Dean White uh, and we heard this week about Alicia Baumgartner as well failing uh, her VADA test and adverse findings being found. Um, again, we, we have to respect that these individuals have to go through the process to prove their innocence and let them have the opportunity. So I'm not going to actually just slate them or say anything bad, but there's a serious issue here with boxing and how do you think it changes or we resolve this where people don't even think about cheating in the future? Um, do you want to start? Uh, you can say it this one. Uh, personally, uh, I don't know if, if Dillian's 100% guilty for the third one, but that would be three times in his career he's had something happen to him. It's like a hat-trick of gear. Um, but, you know... I, I don't know the ins and outs of that. I know the second one he was he was um, exonerated with, uh, with the other situation with Conor Ben, he was exonerated. Uh, Elisa Bamgana has to be, whether she's guilty or not, she has to put a case across. But I don't need no gear with my power. My, my power is just blessed from higher presence. Yes, yeah, it's just the genetics, that warrior genetics. You can look at the history books, you can see the wars that we've won. Uh, you can see the wars that we've won and you see the tickets that are being sold. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Same question. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the pain in the drug test, so, so, this is the thing. I don't know the full story, so I can't say nothing about anyone. Um, truthfully, there's a lot of excuses people can give that wouldn't even be questioned. The fact that they give their excuses and they were questions mean that there must be some sort of innocence there. Because truthfully, if, if Conor Bennett turned around and said that I was taking some sort of medication like to help have a baby or something like that, Nobody would have questioned it. He would have been a hero for speaking out. But ticket line again. Ticket line, sorry. Sorry, bro. Um, ticket line's on fire tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's kicking off now. Um, sorry, I lost that. Yeah, he, it was a lot of stuff he could have said to just basically get off the hook. But he didn't. He went with his road and... Uh, is he, he's been proven innocent or something? Conor Benier. Yeah, yeah uh, he's been proven innocent. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So the board have appealed today. They've officially appealed oh, the, the decision. Board. Yes. And you can. I haven't really been following it, but... In regard, other than the, the drug stuff and the fact he's a wicked fighter, he's an amazing talent for Britain. The thing is, is we don't really focus on other people, you know. That's what I was yeah. doing wrong in my career before. Like, I was just focusing about what other guys were doing. I've never really this. watched anyone other than my, yeah. like, what I'm supposed like, to be doing, really. I right. used to focus on a lot of other people's stuff and I'll see, like, oh, this person's getting pushed there, doing that. Forget all that rubbish, man. I've got to focus on myself, man. I've got to focus on the prince, the guru of girth. Yeah, and I've got to focus on bringing boxing to my community, you know? There's never before been an Indian world champion. There will be an Indian world champion. I wanna get all the people behind us. I wanna show them that we can have a world champion. Because 2023 to not have a world champion yeah. is, is, especially it's when you've got 1.5 billion. It has to billion. happen, man, it has to happen. We need, we need a world champion 1.5 billion Indians globally. Yeah. We're yet to have a world champion, you know? And we've got a lot of good Indian fighters coming up. There's loads of good. another, t sorry, but another ticket Sorry, <laughs> kicking up. Okay, gents, any, uh, any final comments as we uh, conclude this interview? Um, we need to say thank you to everybody that supported and sponsored us. The whole of South Wales come out to support us. They've all brought tickets. Um, I, want, I want to say personally a big shout out to iDental for affordable braces. I didn't have braces, by the way. <laughs> They're just naturally straight. Yeah, just to clarify that. And white. Uh, we might have to despite make sure you're not the guy out. You might need some braces. Yeah, my opponent's <laughs> gonna need some some of that, some of that stuff, like affordable braces and um, stuff like that. I want to say a massive thank you to Octagon for sponsoring the show. Um, we're giving the donation to Nishkam Swat. 
and they've supported the show a lot. Um, Sicario Menswear supported the show a lot. Um, the Modeling Network have sponsored the show. Five Star Windscreens have sponsored the show. Bravos Fight Equipment have sponsored the show. Cameron Clark Lawyers have sponsored the show. Studio 36, our home base, has, has put a lot of work into this show. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot of, um, there's, there's, there's more, there's more. Who else have we got? Uh, I want to say thank you to Camberley because we're going to do our public work out there next yeah. week on the 25th of uh, August. Obviously, media guys have to reserve thingy. There will be security there just in case anyone thinks they can jump in and try and do stuff. We'll have yeah. quite a few security there. Yeah, See thank, close protection ones Thank as you well. to all the pubs in Southall for supporting us. A lot of our tickets were sold at Prince of Wales, especially all the Sheffy boys have supported us. The Great Western pub supported us. We've got the Plough pub, pub have supported us. We've got so much support just come out of Southwell alone. Okay, Tony, Tony Banj, uh, Prince Patel, thank you for speaking to Boxing King Media and we'll uh, surely catch up with you hopefully during your fight week. Awesome, guys. Awesome, thanks, thanks for thank you coming guys. down and doing the interviews. Yeah, no also, also, I forgot, Jot Life as well, jumped on board, thank you guys. Thank you to everybody that's brought tickets and support, supported the show. We really appreciate it.